Switzerland? Yeah. Yeah. So when I did go to Germany with that paddle, because we said we'll never tell the Germans we added that. Because it came from me saying to Lumen, I have an extra finger. What, what can we do with it? And then after we laughed ourselves silly over what I could do with that extra finger, um, we agreed we'll never tell the Germans, because you don't, you, know, you don't muck around with the German design. So I was performing in Hamburg, and a German puppeteer came backstage and said, so yeah, how did you make the arms work independently? How? And I said, oh, it's just this little thing he had. Yeah, that's genius, yeah. <laughs> it's very funny. Can we see you taking the controller from the gallows? Well, this is a control. So uh, movement control I have is, you see, it's, it's held by my ring finger. So that holds the control, and then every other finger is free. So my index finger and my thumb work the leg bar so it can walk, which is also known in puppetry as a one-handed walker. So you don't need to use your other hand to walk. Um, my pinky activates the elbows. So I can, elbows are um, an amazing set of strings because you can, you can make a puppet breathe or shrug or, you know, initiate movement by getting up and down out of a chair with the elbows, like, uh, up you go. Um, and then the hands each have a separate toggle. So, you know, you can, uh, you can, you can do this kind of padding motion because there's a wrist joint. So there's a string on the hand and a string on the forearm. And then with the elbow, so there's six strings just for the arms. And then just by um, tilting the control, and rotating the control is how the head moves. So you can, you can get a nod or a side to side or a look up. Because there's three head strings. There's a, there's a nose and two side strings for the side of the head. And then this, because I rarely have uh, two hands to work a puppet, this little middle paddle is what controls the hand strings. So by tipping it one way, the hand will go. So that's just kind of a cheater. I mean, ideally, the Germans call this the holding hand and the, and the acting hand. So your free hand would be the acting hand. But I usually have a control in each hand. So I have to be able to, you know, get him up just with one hand. And then he can act and he can, can move his legs. And indicate. And there's a lot of swinging going on, right? So if you want him to indicate a certain way, you just get the hand prepped and he indicates over there. Or if you want him to indicate over there. But the control really is half of the equation. The build of the control, the design. The design, yeah. And so hopefully the puppet's going to do everything you want it to do and not mess around with. Um, excess movement. My puppets are very loose. I read something where uh, an American puppeteer said years ago, loosen them up. And I really took that to heart. So mine are very f fluid and flexible. They're not tight at all, but um, they're also, they have their stops built in. So their knees don't bend forward and their elbows don't bend backwards. So for this guy to, you know, get himself in the chair, you, you want him to like feel the chair and then get down and then settle in. And if you have two hands, then you can start showing off with a little tip, tap of the foot or something. But it's a lot of breathing into the thing. I mean, that's what creates the life, you know. So if a character is sitting there, like Penny at the beginning of the play, sighs. So you just have the character go. And when you manipulate, do you sigh when Penny sighs? Absolutely. Even if you don't want the sound to be heard? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So do you do all the efforts of getting up and um, I mean in, in, inside you? Sometimes I find myself actually doing a bit of that, so I train myself not to do that as much because then that just steals focus again, right? And the very first thing they teach you to do with a puppet, be it a TV puppet or a marionette, is to <laughs> fart. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So every sound that a marionette makes has to be supported by a movement or an indication of movement? Uh, 
Not really. I mean, there, you know, there are times where I just leave puppets hanging and go get another one and keep the conversation going. Right. So, uh, and that's just the mechanics of having one guy up here. But uh, Tuppence here, for example, spends a lot of t time on stage just hanging. But she's a bit of an owl as a character. She's just an observer most of the time. So she can just hang out and observe. And then sometimes you get two hands to work a puppet, and it actually gets to be fun, like Queenie and her walker here. So the walker is on its own little bar, and I just manipulate that and walk her into it. And for me, she's the most fun character in the show, because I actually just get two hands to work her. With these guys, I am. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But most of us have a dominant hand. Left. Really? Yeah. So would you give your left hand to more complex things you want to do? Or you can do it both now? Uh, I can do both. Um, you sort of have to, because there's stage right and stage left and all of that. Yeah. But my, well, it's true, because if I've got two characters, then, you know, I've got one in my right hand as well. So. If you're having a scene with two characters, then both are working. Does every puppeteer have their own control, particularities in design? Uh, a lot of people are very specific about their controls. The Americans will not bend. They love the American flat airplane control. And they don't like my controls at all. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a source, a hotly debated uh, source of puppet um, chit-chat, you know. But I figure, you know, it's like, what do you need the thing to do, you know? I, I need to have um, a character that can walk and be animated with one hand, so that's why I love this, this control a lot. <laughs>